if I didn't say that we should talk about spending time with our children, the, one of the first things that I wanted to, to, to share with everybody um, is uh, two, two ideas, two terms uh, that I think that by keeping in mind, it, it, they'll be very helpful. One of them is concerted cultivation. The other term is um, teaching opportunities. It's probably a more common term, but I think it's also very important to keep in mind. Uh, basically, concerted cultivation is a term used um, for a parenting style. These type of parents uh, will look at their children and will try to find what is great about their children, their passions and so on, and they will encourage their children to um, improve on those. So we got to find where our kids are attracting to right. and right. help them and illuminate that. But you know, it goes for everything, maybe reading, so then some reading classes, so maybe mathematics, and of course maybe you get them a teacher, a, a private tutor for mathematics, and that's what concerted cultivation means, and I think it's worth keeping in mind. I come home, somebody wants to play with toys. I say, yes, of course, let's go ahead and play with some toys. And as we're playing with toys, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm listening to what he's saying. What, what, you know, where is his mind going with the game? And that's where you start picking up those, those cues as to what it is that he likes, right? Absolutely. Yeah, see, for, for myself, what I have done with my son is basically given him a 15 to 20 minute one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. every day. Right. It's, it's quality time that it's about him and what he wants to do and let him choose and let him speak his mind. Right. It's not about what I want, it's about what he wants, which helps develop a whole lot of things right. because you know, do an activity, the professionals say, a father's interaction with a child, not only just being there, his presence is important, but his interaction with a child helps bring the IQ up. Of course. Which right. is a motivator. Yeah. I mean, it, it, if it makes your child smarter to play with him and to engage with him, if there's no other motivator, is that it brings his IQ up. So it's something very important. I will be the first to say that it is incredibly difficult for me to come home and play and play in these games. It's very, very difficult because uh, both boys, they, they have these rules that they make up along the way. <laughs> they make him up and they, they don't stop making up rules. Yeah, yeah. I just never really know what I'm playing. Yeah, right? Yeah. But then again, when you know, we're, we're, you know, you've been talking about educating yourself for a long time. You know, from the very beginning, you said, you know, we have to educate ourselves. And, and, and as I continue to read about, about, about the developing brain, I realize, uh, yeah, the, because they are so right brain driven, so emotional and, and so illogical. Yes. You know, it, it, that's why they keep changing this game. So once I became aware of this, once I became, oh, I see, you know, they're, they're all right brain. They're hardly ever any left brain. And so then, fine, okay, well, let's just go illogical and let's connect. And when you connect, then they begin to, to try to bring logic into, into this whole thing because they're connecting with you. And develop skills and develop connections with you, like trust. Yes. You know, and emotional connections with yeah. that. That's, that's very important. And it's part of that activity time with them and, and spending time with them is that connection. Like you said, sometimes you might not understand what they want to do. <laughs> but it's just letting yeah. them do and just yeah. letting them make mistakes and just being yeah. there to... To, right. to, you know, guide them a little bit. Exactly. And even when you do know the answer, ask the question that you know the answers to just to see where your child is right. and what response he gives you. Yes. It's just keeping them motivated Those are the teaching ways. opportunities. Absolutely. Yeah, ask questions to find out what, what they're thinking, where they're going with their minds. I have another example for boys. I don't know if it applies to girls. Um, my oldest son likes to wrestle, to play fight, mm -hmm. which basically means for the next 15 to 30 minutes, I do all of the work throwing them around, okay? <laughs> there's, there's nothing fun about this, all right? So basically what I have to do is I have to throw him and throw him, again, basically on the bed, right? So we go on my bed because, you know, we have the big bed. So I throw him and I grab him and I throw him and I grab him and I throw him and I grab him and I throw him and I, and I spin him around a bunch of times and I throw him and, I, and so this goes for 15, 20 minutes. There's nothing fun about this. I really don't, I don't enjoy it at all. There isn't anything, you know? You need to be oh. fit as a father. That, that's another <laughs> thing. You need to be fit. So if you're working out... Make sure you work out your bad back if you're a father. <laughs> and so then, oh, but what I do do, which I did read somewhere, is um, to make sure to let him win. So after I'm done throwing him around a bunch of times, I, I will go and lay on the bed and uh, 
cover my ears because it hurts a lot when you get hit in, in, on the ears. And then, uh, the back of the neck also hurts a lot. <laughs> 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 so basically, I just cover my head and, um, and I tense my body and hope that I'm not going to get hurt. And then uh, I let him jump on top of me uh, for, for a few minutes, not very much. So that way he feels like he's winning. Yes. Um, and then, of course, I get up and then I throw him around some more. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's part of that's part of being a father. You know, and 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 finding maybe a, a fancy belt or something, and, right. and and then you know announcing him the champion. You know what I mean? Right. That's motivating. That brings self esteem up. That's what you right. want your child to engage in it to be, be feel like he's a winner. Right. You know, uh, sometimes for me with, with with certain games, like he knows I don't like weapons. Okay. So if if his mother or his aunt brought him a, a water gun, yeah. he comes and he wants to explain to me why he has a water yeah. gun. <laughs> and, you know, it could become a fun activity. We're not using it for nothing yeah. to hurt nobody. Yeah. And, and, you know, those are the things that show me that he's learning, he's listening. Yeah. Right. You know, right. through the engaging, those things don't just happen in one day. If certain things just ain't right, like for me, I don't think weapons are good, he's going to have to pick that up over time. Right. It's not one time of me telling him, oh, I don't like guns. Right. It's a time of being able to go through things, maybe seeing something on TV. That's the reason why police officers have guns. Right. And, right. and that's part of the interaction and part of the spending time right. is explaining and patience.